Last year I chose to fish on Kingsmead 1. It's about 30 acres roughly with 180 to 200 carp. I fished the uh, church lake the previous year and done quite well, but after fishing on there, the regulars, they all sort of like fish either one, so you get to know about the lake. So I knew quite a lot about it before I'd even fished it. I've done a little bit on there in the winter, so I chose to fish there in May after I finished on the church lake. And my first session was a bank holiday weekend. Managed to catch two fish in that session. One being one of the A-team, Mr Pink, 46 pound, eight ants. So that set me up for the start of a season that was a season to remember, really. I went on to catch consistently through May. The following session I had a pretty much a red letter session. I had six fish. One of them being my target fish, which was the uh, Ugly Sutton, 38 pound. Another fish called Trio, 35 pound. And a few smaller ones. That was out of a swim called the helipad. That was a, uh, basically a swim that you couldn't really get in after that. It was, the fish were there. It's quite swimmy on that water. There's a couple of swims that will do majority of the fish, most of the spring and all through the summer. The following week, I opted to fish down the far end on a big westerly wind. Although the fish were still up the other end in the helipad swim, I found quite a few fish down the far end. So I managed a couple out of there, well, three out of there, two 20s and a fish called uh, the the Dens two tone, which was a common, quite an elusive one that rarely gets caught. But I think I'd done two captures that year, so I was happy with that. As the uh, month progressed, I kept uh, consistent every weekend. Average stamp of fish was about 20 odd pound with another 30, 36 pound common thrown in. But it wasn't until June when I caught my next notable big fish, uh, a fish called Moonscale, spawned out at 40 pound eight. It usually goes 45 ish. 46 even, so I was happy with that. At this point in, in my season, looking back now, I can see that the consistency was paying off. It was at the end of July when I had another red letter session. I had three of the big mirrors. The uh, Scarred Mirror, 47 pound. That was after spawning. Uh, Armageddon, 38 pound, eight ants. Previous capture was 43 pound. And then the Lucky Sutton, which was 41 pound the previous capture before I had it, but I had it at 39.4. So in theory, that could have been four, three 40 pounders in one session, which was unheard of. Normally, a lake like that, you'll get one big fish and a couple of smaller ones if you have a three fish hit. So by now, I knew that I could be in the runnings for the Carp Angler of the Year competition. I'd uh, been consistent right through until the end of uh, autumn, catching a lot of big fish. I'm talking mid thirties. So going into winter, I've I was feeling confident. The previous year it had done a lot of bites and it was a known good winter water, but it all went it all went pretty wrong for me to be fair, and not just me, for the rest of the people on the lake. It proper shut up shop. It didn't do a bite for about a month, so it wasn't until mid-December, one dark, eerie Friday night, it was literally flat calm, you could hear a pin drop. I'd heard my first first uh, carp show, and that was down the far end. That led me on to uh, three fish in quick succession the following morning. I managed Mr Pink again, 45-12, uh, a 35 common and a 20 pound common. And that was, well, in December after the lake doing no bites, not even any shows for about a month. Um, that, was, that was really good for the lake. It went on to do one more bite two days later and then it shut up shop again for another month, literally. I think Mr Pink come out again in February and that was the next big fish. So it was a really slow winter. The previous winter was it done 20 bites in January, so it was a totally different different year this year, and I wasn't expecting that to be fair, and it really went downhill. Although I caught in three fish, I went a good few months like with no fish, and uh, it wasn't until the end of February, I think the 22nd of February, I come down for an overnighter, and I had a 36 pound 10 ounce, which was signed my uh, season off. The end of my season. I managed 47 fish from Kingsmead 1 to 47 pound. Obviously the Scarred Mirror, the second biggest fish in the lake, being uh, the biggest one of them. And I had five fish out of Church Lake to 43 pound, 12 ounce. So I couldn't have asked for a better season. It was um, probably the best season of fishing I'd ever had. I think the reason I've done so well is down to the confidence I've got in my bait. I've fished the self now for about three years and I never ever doubt that bait. Once it's out in the water, I know it's working for me. It reacts in the water, it's easily digestible. You can put a little bit out, single even, or you can bait heavy. Either way, whatever situation, it works for me. Best of all, you can use any hook bait over the top. Two of my favourites have been Milky Toffee pop-ups and Pineapple Juice pop-ups. 
this season I've been using a new toasted almond. Brilliant hook baits, catch loads of fish. I'm a weekend angler and living in Essex and fishing over here in the Coleman Valley, I think the biggest edge I had with that was turning up last. I used to get here about 8 o'clock in the evening, so I was the last one through the gates usually. Everyone was set up on their spots, they wasn't going to move for the night and I'd end up dropping on fish. So I think that played a big part in uh, a lot of my captures. Obviously if I wasn't on the fish on the Friday, I could move on the Saturday, the lake would empty a bit. I think the obvious reason for the fish being in the uh, quieter areas when I turned up were well, obviously the angling pressure, the lines out in the water, they'd push out into areas where there wasn't any lines and I'd drop on them. In the springtime, once I'd turn up on the show and fish, when everyone else was set up, I'd just cast a couple of uh, singles out, mainly pop-ups on chods, uh, maybe a little scat in the cell, depending on the situation, but they was there for a reason and that was no angling pressure, so I didn't want to spook them off by filling it in, doing this, doing that, so that used to nick me the extra couple of bites on a Friday night. By the Saturday morning, a few people would leave and there'd be more swims coming available. If the fish weren't there at the time, I could up sticks and move. When the summer came, the lakes quietened off a lot more and I used to be able to plan my fishing around the weather, as in the wind. So I'd turn up on a Friday night, say the wind's blowing down one end, uh, the next day it'd be due to blow down the other. So I'd go down the other end where there's no, no pressure, put a heavily baited area at, knowing full well that the wind would turn and come to me the following day. And that has paid off, paid off a lot. I had moon scale doing that once, uh, £40.8. So that was a good tactic. I used to bait, bait them, ready for them and wait for them. And they, nine times out of 10, they'd turn up and they'd turn up in numbers. And that's when I'd get multiple captures, like three or four fish in a weekend. I only used two rigs last year, pop-up rig and a snowman rig. Uh, combine that with a cell and it's an approach that I'm going to take anywhere. I've used it in the past and I'll use it for many years to come. I've got 100% confidence. I know I can take that set up anywhere in the world and it will catch me carp. If the carp are there, I'll catch them. Obviously all these things combined over the year led me to um, come second in mainline carp talk, carp angle of the year competition. It's a great competition, anyone can enter. All you need to do is submit your catch reports to carp talk using the mainline bait. It's exactly what I did. I got noticed and uh, it's resulted in this, it's a great finale to what has been my best season fishing to date.